All right, let me welcome all of you to uh, chat with Matt. Uh, my very special guest star, as I just said, is uh, Scott Nevins, who is going to be talking to us about Zoom, uh, the power tool of the modern era. Uh, what I try to do on chat with Matt is find people with something to say. And uh, gosh, if you, if you know, once you get to know Scott Nevins, you'll know he always has something good to say. Uh, I'm going to let Scott introduce himself because Basically, his, uh, within his presentation, he has a little background on who he is and what he does. Uh, he does perform magic. I'm sure he'll mention that. And uh, we're going to have a conversation about Zoom, but Scott is also going to uh, do a little bit of uh, death by PowerPoint for you. So, Scott, <laughs> why don't you uh, share your screen? And if all of you uh, would put your view uh, when he uh, sets it up, uh, let's see what it says here. View. If you do side by side speaker, I think you'll get the most out of this. Because then the two of us will be on your screen uh, when we're, we'll be off to the uh, left hand side when you're, uh, uh, when we're speaking. The rest of the time, you'll be able to see us and your uh, uh, Scott's slides. So, Scott, the show is yours, and I'll just uh, give it from the background. Cool, but I, I appreciate it. So, um, First off, thank you all for taking the time today. So hopefully um, you will feel that, uh, that the time will be well spent. Everything that I'm gonna be talking about today are things that you can put into action today. Um, and uh, the, uh, you know, so, so nothing that I'm gonna be talking about it takes years of, of uh, practice, uh, thousands of dollars, um, but um, you know, as uh, as Matt was uh, mentioning, um, in terms of uh, my background, um, I'm one of the senior advisors at Bernstein. So, uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with Bernstein, we're a very large investment management firm. We manage about six hundred and fifty billion dollars, and we're the only major firm in the industry that actually does investment management. So we don't, unlike other firms in the industry, we don't resell third party products. We act as a fiduciary. So we have a very close relationship with our clients. The key takeaway though, from that point is, as you can tell, the types of folks that I work with are very, you know, are, high, are higher net worth individuals, family offices, foundations, endowments. And so, you know, it's all, I'm in the trust business, which basically means that you know, I have to develop a rapport with all of my clients, with all the professionals that I work with. And when the pandemic started, um, my world in terms of how I interacted with people dramatically changed, right? I'm the kind of person who had breakfast meetings, lunch meetings, dinner receptions every single day. I had meetings throughout the course of the day. Um, I would, uh, it, it, you know, I, I would drive, you know, uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles a week. Um, and, and, you know, so I was always spending my time with my clients. Um, but when the pandemic hit, um, you know, the world had, the, you know, the world was thrown um, into a curveball and the world was going to become virtual. So based upon my background, which I had run seven companies before I had been, so I'm at Bernstein 15 years. I, for 20 plus years, I was running companies. I ran seven different companies that were financial service or technology service companies. I began at GE Capital in Stanford. Um, but the key to success uh, is really thinking out of the box. So it was time to, um, although I wasn't planning on it at the moment, reinventing myself, it was time to reinvent myself. And part of what we're doing right now in, uh, uh, in, in the world of Zoom is we all have to unfortunately reinvent ourselves. In the well, pandemic- If I can interrupt you, we're certainly reinventing how we approach everybody. Abs and, absolutely. And in, case, it, and in your case, it was uh, honestly very dramatic how that changed. It was huge, it was huge. So, you know, so, so I had to sit back and basically figure out, you know, I, I, there may be, you know, there may be people on this uh, Zoom meeting that have done takeout that have gone to some restaurants, that have gone to some stores. Um, let me tell you, I have not done takeout. 
I have not gone to dinner at any place. I have not done any social <laughs> distancing meetings. Um, I live in Greenwich. I have another house up in Rhode Island. I will drive from point A to point B. Um, I will ride my bike in both places. And I, use a I have a boat that's here in Greenwich. That's it. That's my life right now. I, the closest I get to people is how close we all are right now. I mean, I manage the money for neighbors of mine. I don't, I'm no closer to them than I, I clients in Singapore. Um, I'm as close to everybody right now. So what I want you guys to do, though, is to, to picture this may be our world for another six plus months. You know, it could be longer. If you're like me, it, it's probably going to be longer. So, so what um, so what we're going to be talking about today is how do you set up your studio? Um, uh, because now you're a TV celebrity. Right, you may not realize it, but now you're a TV celebrity. Um, and how do you conduct, you know, the conversation? How do you use body language? How do you successfully network in a virtual world? I mean, I have actually gotten well more than a dozen new clients that I never met before that I met virtually in a in a, in a networking environment. I am now working with a couple of hundred of new. Um, uh, of, of, of new professionals that I never worked with before that I met in this world. So it is doable. Um, I'm going to get through, do a shout out though to Peggy, to, 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 to Peggy Bud, for those of you that don't know her, who does coaching of, uh, you know, presentation skills. She's fantastic. But in the beginning, she and I, I was talking to Matt and Matt you know, had suggested that I talk to Peggy a, a little bit about, you know, the world of Zoom, um, because there were some things that he noticed even in the beginning when I was doing this that could be better. So Peggy really got me on the road to re really coming up with this, you know, this approach. Yeah, so if I can interrupt for a second. The real story, as I told Scott, he desperately needed some help, and he is the world's best student. So, and 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 the world of network. So so I had this program that I called Rainmaking through networking, where I taught people networking. So I figured that there was a need out there to teach people how to do uh, to Zoom. Now I don't charge anything, right? I literally do this as I sh shared with you. I think you know five plus times a week. Um, you know, I just was on a session. I just did a hundred attorneys at one of the law firms in Stanford. Um, you know, I did the Stanford Chamber of Commerce yesterday. I do groups, you know, pretty much almost every day I do a session like this. So uh, it, when I make the, this, you know, and I'll tell you guys that over and over and over, if you guys have, you know, want help, feel free to reach out to me. It is not an idle just thing to be helpful. I help people in networking. I help people in Zoom. I help people in money management, but there's no strings attached, you know, in the, in, you know, so I just do, I just uh, enjoy doing this. Scott, um, you take a minute before you really get started. You had your, you should put your previous slide on. You didn't really cover it yet. Uh, you know, just take a minute. You, you did a lot of in-person selling uh, and maybe you can just share with us uh, the reality of Zoom and how, uh, how the connection, you, how you can still make great connections over Zoom. It's, it, you, as, as I shared, I mean, I've, I, in this, during the period of, of, of Zoom, of, of COVID, where Zoom is the, the medium to interact with people, you know, the, the best statement I can make is, you, you know, well more than a dozen new clients and a couple of hundred professionals. And it's all people that I never met before that I, that I met literally in a format like this. Um, and it is doable. And I'm going to actually cover in this presentation tricks of the trade in order to be able to successfully connect with people. So it is absolutely doable. Um, and uh, um, everybody can get a copy of the slides that I'm going through as well. So that's, you know, just email me or, or um, and I'll send out or uh, actually, uh, you know, Matt, you know, provided the context, I'll send out the slides so that you guys will have a copy of this. Um, the, the goal is make, you know, be successful. So one of the things about a home studio is where are you looking? <laughs> All right. So on the left, what you're looking at is me looking directly at the screen, but I'm on an iPad. And what most people don't realize is when you're looking directly at the screen and the camera is off to the left, it looks like you're looking off the screen. 
even though I'm looking directly at you. So when people are on a Zoom, when they're doing a Zoom meeting and they're looking at the screen, no. they may not necessarily be looking directly at the person. You have to look at the camera. Now, one of the problems with the iPad is the camera's off to the side. And I tried my damnness to try to figure out how I could look to the side and still be looking at the screen and looking at the person. And I, I could not do it. And so what I did was I bought myself a laptop where I would have a camera that was in the center of the screen. The problem though, when you buy a laptop, because I bought a cheap laptop, I didn't have a need for a laptop. I used my iPad for pretty much everything was it comes with a cheap, it comes with a cheap camera. So I'm gonna be showing you some of the devices that I've purchased along the way. But one of the things that I bought was a higher end uh, webcam. Now, one of the things that I do with this webcam is uh, right now, you guys are in these Hollywood square boxes, but you're off to the right side of my screen. My camera, I've moved to the right side of my screen. So that when I'm looking um, at you guys, because it makes me feel better that I'm looking at you, it looks like I'm looking at you, but you know, the ca it's because the camera is over where, where you guys are. But when you're doing the Hollywood squares and you've got people on the left, you've got people on the right, I'm constantly behind the scenes, moving my camera back and forth so that I'm looking at the people that I'm speaking to. So on the left though, you're noticing that if you're not looking at the camera, you don't get the warm and fuzzy that I'm talking to you. What you're also noticing on the left is that there's distractions in the background. So I have hundreds of bobblehead dolls. It happens to be something that I collect. I mean, who, you, know, you know, a silly hobby, but I have shelves all around my office with hundreds of bobblehead dolls above my head. Well, it's pretty distracting when you see a shelf coming out of my head. So the angle in which you have the camera makes a big difference. There's a hanger on my door in my office, if you'll notice that I wanted to point out. Well, every little detail matters because you're trying to create the image of professionalism when you're on this. The lighting isn't even very good when you're looking at it. I'm yellow, it's not very good. So on the right, what you're noticing is you see me looking directly at the camera. You see the lighting being better. Now, I actually have eight lights in my home office, <laughs> eight lights. I've got two lights that you're, I'm gonna point, I'm gonna have, a, I have a picture that shows the different kinds of devices, but two lights connected to the back of my computer facing me. I've got lights on my sides. So I've got lights, you know, you know, off in the background. Um, but the goal is I'm trying to create the effect where when you're, where you and I are sitting together, just as though um, we're sitting across each other from the table. I mean, if you look at Peggy, she's, you know, at the right level, right? She's looking at the camera, she's in the middle. You know, there's about this much of space above her head. So when we're speaking, it's, it is as though like she and I are sitting, you know, at a table. Um, and, you know, and as an, as an example, I'm looking at Bill who's sitting back, he's having a drink. Um, you know, and, and, and again, sorry, there's only eight boxes on my screen right now and you happen to be one of them. Uh, no. <laughs> but, but, but again, you gotta realize that everybody is watching every movement that you're making while you're on this. And if it's a movement that you're comfortable with everybody seeing, then it's perfectly fine. Now on the right. If I could just interrupt, the, the point is, you never know who's looking at your box. So you have to be careful what you're doing. Absolutely. I mean, you're on stage the whole time your box is on. Right. It's lights, camera, action. You're on. You're on stage the whole time. The unblinking eye. Now, one of the things that I recommend to everybody, it, notice what I've circled on the right-hand side. I've circled my email address. When I join a meeting, I always have my name and I have my email address. Why do I always have my name and my email address? Because my job in life is making sure it's easy for people to reach me. <laughs> All right. So you want to put your email address in your name because it's one of the many ways, um, you know, in, in my case, you know, my email address also has the name of my company, but, you know, you're, I'm trying to make it easy for people to reach me. Now, if you look in your chat box, um, um, one of the things that you'll notice is that there's a chat in there um, um, from me which basically is my contact information. So the first thing that I do when I join a meeting is I put my contact information along with a little brief, you know, something unique about me, uh, you know, in that. Why? 
because again, there are going to be a lot of people during a meeting looking at the chat box and I want people to know who I am. So what do I do? In Word, I have a little paragraph, in you know, a little thing. I copy paste it the minute I join a meeting. I don't sit here and type it. I copy and paste it. Boom, I'm in the meeting. I have my name on the screen. I've got a little bit, you know, so if, you know, if, if you're a senior person or, or, or junior person, what have you, you're in transition, you're in a meeting, you're, there's certain unique things about you that, that are going to stand out. You want to you take advantage of every single tool that you have available. Angle of the camera makes a big difference. On the right hand side, you're looking at two different angles. One I call the parent, one I call the, the child. Right? I mean, if you look around the room right now, you know, at the at the people that 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 are on, you know, you'll see that some, you know, people are at all different types of angles um, when you're looking at them. And who do you feel most comfortable with with the people that you would be interacting with? you're gonna feel most comfortable with the people that look like me on the left, which is I'm at your height, uh, you know, I'm looking directly at you. Um, you know, in one case, you know, the, 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 the parent, you know, I'm looking up, you know, you see lots of people, you're looking up people's noses, you know, you, you got, um, you know, you see, uh, you know, distractions in the background because behind me, you know, I wanted to point out my, my office door was open so you could see my, a hallway, you can see a light above my head. A lot of times when people have their, their devices and they're looking up, they've got the ceiling, they've got ceiling lights, it's very distracting. Or if you've or if you're got a camera at the top and it's facing down, um, now you're, you're making the other person feel uncomfortable because you're trying to feel superior to them. You know, people feel most comfortable when you're looking directly at them. Some tools of the trade. So again, everything is available on Amazon. Uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, Amazon comes to my house three times a day. Uh, so <laughs> there are no, you know, uh, sometimes I go out to eBay when I don't have the patience to wait for some things that are back ordered. Um, but you know, ring lights um, or uh, lights that fit, you know, that 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 um, uh, attach to the back of your screen. Um, you know, are uh, you know with suction cups um, are are interesting. I have different standing lights in my office at different angles to create to try to create you know you know a, a more well well lit you know environment. But if I were to start shutting off some of these lights, look at what I look like. Right there's one light off. I look like garbage. Um, here's another light off. I look even you know I, I look you know even worse. Right. I mean, it's, it doesn't make you feel warm and fuzzy. If you're talking to me like this, it kind of makes you feel lousy. It makes, it's putting you to sleep. Um, so, you know, it's important, you know, so lighting really, it's interesting, does make a really very large difference. Now I have to be careful because I'm wearing eyeglasses. And one of the problems with eyeglasses is if I look the wrong way, I get, you know, you, you'll notice that I get like rings in my eyes from these from these lights. So I'm constantly looking at what I look like on the screen. And if my head happens to go too high, I quickly go back down so that I'm not, you know, I, I'm, so that I'm trying to make sure that, you know, I, I, I'm always paying attention to how I look to the other person to make sure I look the way that I want them to look. Um, mics. You know, I bought a couple of hundred dollar mic. This is a, 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 a this is a directional mic. Why did I do that? Well, if you're like me, and especially in the fall right now, I'm constantly you know there's constantly lawn mowers or blow or or blowers or noise and uh, all over the place. Do you realize even this morning there were there were people blowing leaves? I'm doing a presentation like this. Um, and I asked anybody, does anybody hear any, anything other than me? And they said, no. I mean, I could hardly hear myself. It was so noisy. Um, but, you know, again, this is my world. So I have to make sure that people are going to wind up hearing me. So I invested in a, a higher end mic. I'm not saying that everybody has to do that. But you have to be aware of, of, of the way you sound to other people, uh, you know, by other people. Um, and on the right, you see a picture of an iPad, you see a picture of a laptop, um, you, you, and, you, and you see that you know, the camera on the laptop is in the middle, the camera on the iPad is off to the side. Um, again, it's not that, you know, so looking at the person on the screen um, is not what you're trying to accomplish. You're trying to be looking directly at the person, which means the camera has to be where the people are. One of the tricks, if you're only speaking with one person, you know, and you're, you've got a camera in the middle, put, the, put yourself into speaker mode. Even if you've got two people up, 
right? And you're in Zoom, one of you is gonna be off to the left, one is gonna be off to the right if you're in gallery mode, which means if you're looking at that person, even though you're looking at the person, you're looking off the screen. Put them in speaker mode and now you're looking at them, you know, you know, straight on. I always start with my audio off and video off until I'm ready, right? Lights, camera, action. Make sure that you're ready. Um, as I pointed out, always have your full name. You know, it, you know, if you if you were to go through, um, and I didn't check everybody's names, but like, um, uh, 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 you know, and again, when I call on people's names, I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything, but like uh, Sudapon, uh, 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 it could be, you know, my eyes. Uh, that that's a hard name, or like D Berkowitz, um, you know, and and things like that. When you're going through um, every opportunity, every meeting that you're on, this, it's a networking opportunity. So you want your first name, you want your last name, and my recommendation is stick your email address in there as well to make it easy for people to be able to reach you. What if to wear? I just, if I could just add to that, Scott, you want in in FENG tradition, you want your greeting to use. If you're William and you go by Bill, use Bill. Absolutely. This is not, uh, you know, somebody's not writing you out a check. Somebody's trying to get to know you. That's exactly. You want to be as friendly as possible. If you go by Scott, well, Scott is easy. Boy, you have it easy. <laughs> Matthew, William, Robert, we have so many problems, right? Yeah. And, and you have to go with what you want people to call you. It, it, it makes a huge difference. It really does. Yeah. What, what to wear. So I was, a suit, you know, in my world, I, wear, I wore a suit every day. I wore a tie every day. I wore a white shirt every day. I only owned white shirts. <laughs> okay, that was it. In the world of Zoom, you do not want white shirts. White shirts reflect light. Um, so I went out and bought, I bought, I don't know, probably about 15 blue shirts, <laughs> all right? Blue is the color you wanna be wearing. Um, you don't want stripes if you can avoid stripes because stripes make people dizzy when you're looking at them. You want something, you know, you, you know I mean, again, I, I'm sorry to keep, you know, using Peggy as a model, but I, actually I got my kickstart from Peggy, so why not? But notice how she looks in the, in, in the presentation, right? Blue, you know, it, it, you know, she stands, she stands out. So if you're looking, you know, part of, you know, the, the world of Zoom, you got all these people, you're going to be attracted to the people that, you know, look and feel as professional as you want, you know, the, the kind of people that you want to interact with. Um, so I don't recommend, you know, busy things. I don't recommend, you know, blue is the color of choice or some, you know, something that is basically, um, you know, neutral, but not white. White, you know, if you successfully set up a home studio and you've got lights all over the place, white is going to be, the problem is the light reflects off of white and I'm going to look dark. <laughs> right, your, your camera kind of self-adjusts to the lighting. That's exactly correct. And, and I did have a Zoom meeting early on uh, back in uh, March or April uh, where I had a heavily striped shirt. And of course, it was too late to change it. And it was even making me dizzy. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, 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 it's, it's all about the other people. So um, test the way that you look. So before I do meetings in, in the beginning of the day, I'll log on, create you know, my own meeting. I'll, I just make sure everything is set up. <laughs> How do I look? <laughs> you know, <laughs> am I ready for basically being on TV for t today? Um, I pointed out again, eye level, eye level, eye level. If I can emphasize eye level enough times, it really makes a big difference, right? You don't want, you know, if I'm talking to you like this right now, you're not gonna listen to me as much as if I'm, if I'm you, know, you know, present, you know, I'm sitting with you. Again, framing we talked about, lighting we talked about, background. One of the things that people have a problem with background is if you're using a virtual background um, and you move your hand, you move your body, parts of you are vanishing <laughs> and it's very distracting. Now, it may be you know, great you know, using a virtual background if you're on with friends. I mean, in the beginning of, of Zoom, I mean, I had you know, fun pictures. You know, I, you know, pictures of, uh, you know, I was in Costa Rica. I had a picture of a, you know, a monkey sitting on my shoulder while I'm in the, you know, this. I, I had, you know, different, different. Well, in a business environment, 
you know, the, the, the tradition, the, you know, the rule of thumb is, you know, the background's got to be simple. It should only be things that people that, that you're comfortable with seeing. It could be a bookshelf. It could be a blank wall. Um, you know, if it's just a blank, you know, if my wall all was white behind me, that wouldn't be good because, you know, again, I would be washed out. But my office, you know, I took down the pictures that happened to be on that wall because I wanted it to be, you know, you know, when I'm talking to people, I want them to be, you know, paying attention to me. Um, Scott, I, Scott, can you hear me? I can. Okay, I just want to add something. I mean, everything you're saying is wonderful, and thank you for all of your um, compliments. Uh, something that I don't know if you realize. And that is, I agree that you should check how you look, uh, you know, before you get on. But did you realize that as the day changes, you may need to readjust your light because if the sun is coming in at different angles, it's going to make you look different. As nighttime comes and you have only your lights and no more daylight, it's going to change. So if you set your camera up at nine o'clock in the morning, and you say the lighting is perfect and you don't really check it, it may not be, it may need to be tweaked at one in the afternoon. Just which thought a, I'd throw that out. A, which is a really good point because, so what I did was my home office did not have shades. I put shades in, in my office because at different times of the day yeah. um, with the sun coming in, it was a real problem. So, um, you know, so in the morning or at night, you know, it, it, now it's dark out, so I don't need my shades down. But in the morning, I have my shades down. So it's basically, it's however, you know, again, you're creating a studio. Um, I identified a thing called web around, um, which, you know, for somebody that's, you know, rather than using a virtual background, if you don't like what's behind you, if you don't have a, a you know, some, an area that, that um, you can kind of cordon off for the purpose of a studio, um, there's a company called web around. And it's actually a round, big round thing that attaches to the back of your chair um, and it essentially creates like a blue, you know, a green screen uh, behind you. Uh, and it's a way of also, again, controlling um, what people are seeing behind you. Yeah. I don't um, know if I've sat in on as many Zoom calls as uh, Scott, but I would tell you that most virtual backgrounds really don't work. The, um, the um, headphones, you can kind of see what's really behind you through part of the headphones uh, and it basically looks like you're floating in a pool of mercury. And yeah. I don't think that's a desirable thing. I, I don't know, if, did you cover the water issue? No, I'm, so I'm now doing that now. That's the last one. So yeah. let me ask you it after you're done. A lot of times people have um, like the sports bottles, you know, because you're at home um, or um, they have mugs that have different sayings on them. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's basically, you know, whatever you would be drinking out of if you were sitting in front of somebody is what you want to be drinking out of when you're on Zoom. You don't want to be drinking out of a sports bottle, uh, you know, unless, you know, you, the other person thinks that you're at the gym, um, you know, because that's not professional. You don't want to be drinking out of a mug that, you know, like that has expressions on it that aren't what you want the other person to see. So whatever you would normally expect to find in a person's office, you know, what, it, it, that's what you would expect to be drinking, you know, out of when you're on a, when you're on a Zoom meeting. Yeah, I'm glad, you know, Scott, I'm glad you really, you brought this up. I had the pleasure of sitting in on a, a committee interview of one of my candidates for my search practice, and uh, he was drinking out of a bottle. It seemed like every time he answered a question, he would take another drink out of that bottle. He would unscrew the top, go... <laughs> I mean, really, it's a, so it's distracting. So the, yeah. the major, the major point here, and uh, I, I also like what you said about the uh, what's on the glass. What people don't grasp is that everything communicates. So, what's in your background? What's on the glass you're using? If you have some kind of logo on your shirt, everything is communicating. Yeah, I mean, it's. It, 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 I mean, I, you are a TV celebrity. <laughs> yeah. So body language matters. So what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, you want, you know, if you're in person with somebody, um, people will spend more time with people that are likable. <laughs> all right. What is likable? People that smile, people that are warm, people that are engaging, mm -hmm. 
if you're a sourpuss um, or you're too serious, um, you know, it, it, you know, it, it, in person, those are the kind of people that you're going to typically walk away from, um, as well as, um, you know, if you're on in a Zoom meeting, you're not going to want to spend time with them. So it's important that you 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 smile, um, you use your hands appropriately, right? If I just keep doing like this with my hands, it's going to make you guys nutsy case. But if I'm trying to emphasize a point. Um, you know, if I'm just sitting too static and I'm talking like this, you know, that's not me. You know, me is I, you know, like I'm, you know, I'm animated. I talk to people. I'm engaged with people. Well, you know, if you're using your hands appropriately, you're going to get a lot more across than if you're just sitting like, a, you know, a, you know, a, 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 you know, a, 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 you know, sitting like a log. Um, you don't want to. You have, you have to be very careful on Zoom not to do too many hand motions. The refresh rate on the screen is not strong. Right. And so you don't want to be doing like a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Sure. I'm glad you showed them that. Show them again. Yeah. If I go like this, it's like crazy. Yeah. So the key, the key Scott, is to whatever you do, to do it slowly. So if you want to say something, use something at a very one, two, three will slow it down and so you won't have that blurriness. Absolutely, especially, and then if you're using a virtual background on top of that, it's like even worse because, uh, Uno, do me a favor. Um, go like this with your, with your hand. Look, his hand is vanishing, right? I mm -hmm. mean, I mean, it's really, it's, it's really distracting. Um, so it's one thing if you're talking to friends and family and you're all having fun with the background, but if you're in an interview, if you're in a business meeting, it is really distracting. Um, okay, as I pointed out, you know, sit forward, don't sit back. Um, looking at the other person, um, and, and uh, we covered the other points there. So, world of networking. How do you wind up get, generating new contacts in in this world? Um, people generally are saying, "Oh my God, you know, I can't network anymore. I can't meet new people." And I will tell you, they're wrong. You absolutely can. Um, it's different. You're meeting them in a different way, but you absolutely can. So let's let's talk about ways to be successful. Number one, always arrive early, always drop off late. S same comment I would make in the world of networking. So when you join a meeting, typically, if there is a presentation going on, there's typically a period of time when people are starting to come online and they're letting people in, um, or if it's a smaller group, um, you know, th that early time is incredible because now you got fewer people to deal with in, in the beginning. Um, and you want to, you know, when, when I'm doing a presentation and if I'm the speaker, like normally, which is shameful on me, but I, it, it literally, I, I, this presentation that I had to do just before this meeting was originally scheduled for tomorrow. They had a change that moved it from tomorrow to today. Normally, I would have joined this meeting at the 10 of five, uh, 10 of four, like when, when Matt, you know, suggested everybody gets on. And I would have been talking to everybody uh, for those 10 minutes. I would have been getting to know people. I would have been able to, you know, learn a little bit more about my audience. I would have been connecting with people. So, you know, I wasn't able to do that today, which, you know, I hate, um, but but that's great time to, to be meeting people and dropping off, you know, at the end until somebody, you know, the host presses leave meeting, <laughs> the meeting is over. Um, you want to stay on because who's ever on probably wants to be meeting other people as well. Now, what I do is um, um, how do you, how, how, you know, how do I interact with a lot? How do I remember everybody? Well, one of the devices that I use is my phone. Now, if this was the world of networking and people had business cards, I would tell people to be taking pictures of business cards, but this is not that world any longer because the last thing I'm gonna do is touch a business card that one of you guys is gonna hand to me right now, unless I'm wearing gloves, you're wearing gloves and I'm gonna spray it with Lysol after I get it. Um, so what do I do in this world? Well, in this world, I'm constantly taking pictures of the screen. <laughs> I've got everybody's face. Um, I've got everybody's name. Um, if I'm not the person, and I will go through screen by screen by screen, and I'll be taking pictures of everybody so that I have all of the contact, you know, all the people that were on the meeting, because not every meeting that you're on is giving you, a, you know, the, the, the attendee list. Um, and 
uh, if if I'm not the presenter, um, right? I can't do it when I'm the presenter. But if I'm not the presenter, I'm actually using LinkedIn to be get it to be researching the people that I'm looking at. Why am I doing that? Because if I, during this meeting, if I am re, if I if I can connect with you during the time that the meeting is taking place, I'm going to be that much more successful. So what I and and this is how I get you know how, how I've, I've you know several new clients that I've met this way, professionals that I've met this way, um, and what I'm doing is I'm looking them up. I'm using chat. To connect, you know, to say hi, you know, I, I see you're on the meeting, you know, uh, I've I've already looked them up on LinkedIn. I know a little bit about them, so I said, you know, so I'm able to actually converse because, again, the more custom the connection is, the more information you know about other people. That you know, they may have said something, you know, in the meeting that you want to comment on. There may be something in their background. You know, I see, I notice something, you know, like. You know, like, madam, you know, wow, the picture in your background, I see, I really like it. You know, you, you, you want to personalize the connection. The minute you personalize the connection, um, then you're able, to, you're going to be meaningfully more successful. Um, so it, the more, and the more I can do during the meeting and making connections, the better it is. So that's an important, important, important takeaway in the world of networking. Yeah, we should um, talk for just a minute about uh, our modern world, uh, you know, if you register for a meeting, there is oftentimes uh, a registration site where they allow you to put your uh, background information, a little snippet. Uh, I belong to the Association for Corporate Growth, and at their meetings, uh, I have the ACG uh, membership directory open. And while I'm on the Zoom call, I look people up. Uh, you know, the Scott, if it, the, la the uh, next level is, of course, LinkedIn which is available to you. If you have two monitors, which uh, I do, you know, as all of us are setting up our home office, two monitors is great because you can have the meeting on one screen and you can be looking, you can have multiple windows open on the other screen, looking people up. Yeah, and then <laughs> and, and, and the, the, the quicker you can meet with them, the, 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 the more effective it's gonna be. So then, but the goal is, is to create one-on-one -on -one meetings, right? Because in a group meeting, it's one thing, but in, 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 if things go well, many of you will reach out to me after this. And you know, one-on-one -on -one meetings are what the world of networking is all about. It's not group meetings. The whole focus of a group meeting is to get to one-on-one -on -one meetings. So what do I do? I schedule like I used to do, breakfast meetings, lunch meetings, drinks, coffee meetings. And what do I do? I, you know, in any, you know, I, I say to people, bring your coffee, bring your lunch, bring your, bring a drink. Um, just the same as you would have done in, in real life where you would have gone to, you would have gone for a drink at the end of the day or you would go for breakfast. Um, people are still eating, people are still drinking. Um, so I literally schedule breakfast meetings, lunch meetings, coffee meetings, drink meetings, just like I always used to. And um, you know, and, and now the thing that you know is you always know you're eating something that you like or drinking something you like because you've actually made it. But you know, people think that it's actually creative when you're doing that. You, you know, rather than simply saying, let's set up a Zoom meeting, you say, let's set up a breakfast meeting <laughs> on Zoom, <laughs> right? And people will, you know, people get a kick out of that and they're more likely to do it. Um, using the chat feature, as I pointed out, on the bottom of the screen is, you know, the same thing that's, that, that is in the chat feature. But, you know, the first thing I did when I joined your meeting today um, was, you know, I put, the, you know, I copied pasted in you know, that's like just part of my normal thing. I copy paste and I, now I'm in the meeting. Um, so everybody should, you know, have their own little um, vignette, you know, little story or whatever it is, but it should be something different. If you're just putting your contact information, that by itself isn't enough. Um, you know, the LinkedIn address that, that gives you a little bit of additional information, but you know, it should be something unique and different about you, right? So for me, one of the quotes one of my clients made years ago is how I live my life anyhow. So it's it's something that I use is, you know, there's no such thing as somebody who's very honest or highly ethical. You're either honest and ethical or you're not, right? It's black and white. And that's why clients of mine are clients of mine because they know that I'm honest, I'm ethical, and there's no there's no middle ground. I mean, if you're working with me, you're gonna get the straight the straight story. But each person should have, you know, 
something unique and different about them, not just your contact information, not just that you're looking for a certain type of position, but something that makes you unique and different to the rest of the group. Yeah, it is kind of challenging. And I think to your point, your, your goal is to look open to networking. I can't believe the number of people who try to hide today. I don't know what the benefit is. You've got to look like you're open to networking. And uh, just to repeat again, your, your, your greeting to use is what should be on the screen. Uh, as Scott has uh, his email address, you want to be extending invitations even when you're not actually extending invitations. You want people to feel you're open to contact, being contacted. Follow-up is even more important in this world than it was even in person. Um, you know, as an example, um, my, my, my master networker student uh, is my younger son, who unfortunately is a senior uh, in college this year. And as everybody you know, uh, knows, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, not, not going, the classic uh, senior experience. It is not the classic senior ex experience. So, um, but he's a sports management major. And um, so his dream job in life is to become a general manager of a baseball team. And so he's had some really good internships. He worked for the Mets two years ago. He was supposed to work for the Mets as a player development intern this past summer, but unfortunately the baseball season was canceled for the minor league. And so unfortunately his position was eliminated. Um, but he, you know, in terms of networking, this kid has built up a, a network second to none. And at the moment, there's three opportunities that hopefully he'll get offered one of them because he's pretty shortlisted on the Dodgers, the Mets, and, and the Cubs. Um, but it's all from networking, right? I mean, it's, it, it, you know, he and I went to a, um, a, a, a Nick game in the old days where you actually went to a game in person. Um, and we were sitting, we were in the front row of one of the sections, which happened to be where the, you know, the, uh, um, uh, Steve Mills, who's the president of the Knicks, uh, happened to be, uh, I think it was Steve Mills, um, whoever, um, walking by, and I didn't know who it was. My son said, that's Steve Mills. You know, he's the president of the, you know, general manager, president, whatever. So I said, well, it sounds like somebody that you want to know. He said, yeah. I said, so meet him. So what does the kid do? He, the kid reaches over, um, you know, uh, the handrail and puts his hand out and said, Mr. Mills, you know, you know love the opportunity to meet you. Um, he comes over. Um, they have a little conversation. Uh, the kid at the time was a freshman uh, in college. And, you know, so they get to the end of the conversation. And um, what, do, what do you do? Well, you know, my, my kid, you know, learned, uh, learned how to do networking, had a business card with him, gave him the business card and said to Mr. Mills, do you have a business card? Mr. Mills said, no, I'm sorry, I don't have one with me. What does my son do? He takes out another one of his business cards, flips it over, had his pen, said, Mr. Mills, would you mind writing your contact information down so that I could reach you? What does he say? You know, you catch people off guard, they're just gonna do it. So he did it. And then what uh -huh. do I do? I right. said, hey, you know, Steve, would you mind doing me a favor? Because the two of you, it would make a really great picture. Can I get my, a picture of you and my son together? So I take a picture of the two of them together so that when my son was following up, he's not only following up as saying, well, we met at the Nick game. You know, here's the picture. The two of us actually did meet at the Nick game. We did actually speak, you know, and, you know, but so that's world, you have to be creative in the world of following up. Can I, so, can I say something here? One of our family mottos is every event is a networking event. Whether it's tennis, whether it's this baseball game you went to, whether it's the grocery store. If you're walking down the street, it's a it's a networking opportunity. There's not a piece Always of clothing is. that I that I used to own that had a business that didn't have business cards in it. But right now, I mean <laughs> I'm never gonna get yeah. But so right now I have to make the world of Zoom into a business card. I have to make the world of Zoom, you yeah. know, it, it, bringing that to life. So following up. The more custom and unique, the, the more you've listened to what's unique about the other person, right? You know, you, you know, if I, if I were, you, you know, reaching out to people, you know, you know, as an example, you know, I'm just quickly, um, you know, thumbing through to see if there's, um, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, something unique or interesting, you know, about, you know, what's, you know, in somebody's office or or what have you, you know, if, 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 you know, if I can see things, because you're always looking around, 
Um, you know, is there something unique or different that I can make reference to? Um, or is there something that somebody said or something in their LinkedIn or something? The more custom you can make it, the more, the higher the probability that somebody's going to get back to you. And again, my follow-up is going to be, can I set up a one-on-one -on -one meeting with you with it's breakfast, lunch, dinner, coffee, you picked it, you know, but that's the goal. Um, as I share, as normally what I try to do, if I'm giving a presentation, I'm using multiple devices um, in how we were sharing screens, uh, uh, like the one I just did before I did it with two, this I'm using with one, but I like having multiple devices around me because I can actually control what everybody is seeing a little bit better. <laughs> Bless you. Um, if you are doing Zoom meetings, if you are hosting meetings, um, don't use the cheap free one um, because it times out after 40 minutes. Um, you know, it's kind of, ta you know, it's kind of tacky. You're in the middle of a meeting and all of a sudden the thing says, sorry, you've got two minutes left in your meeting. Well, that's, um, only, that's only for meetings of three or more people. But still, my, my comment to everyone is don't be such an accountant. It's only $150. I mean, really, you can afford it and you need to do it to look for, to Scott's point, to be professional. And yeah, so Zoom is here to stay. Um, it's not going right. anywhere. And you realize that even when people start going back uh, to, you know, when they're in an office environment, the concept of Zoom is changed, you know, the, in the pandemic, it's, it, what it did was it fast forwarded what was already happening, which would have taken probably five or 10 more years to get to. Um, but this world is going to be with us for quite some time. Um, and so you really, unfortunately, you know, just have to embrace it and you have to get really good at it. Um, you want to spend time, you know, and a couple of dollars, um, you know, getting everything is getting everything just perfect so that, you know, when people are looking at you, they feel, you know, th they feel that you're actually in front of them. Um, you want to test every time you're, you're going on, you know, as Peggy was pointing out, different time of the day, but, uh, you know, it, you may have moved something in your office that, that no longer looks good on a, on, a, on a table. All those little details matter. And then it's all about practicing. I hate when I'm listening to a presentation when somebody is saying, "Can you hear me now? You know, can, you know, can you see what I'm looking at? I mean, you should have practiced. You should know what they're seeing. You should, right? It's, 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 it's you know, it's just, it's that it's something. It's a new skill that people just, you know, haven't had to really, you know, I didn't embrace it really before all of this happened. Um, I used it a little bit, but I didn't really embrace it. This is my entire world now. I mean, literally, you are you are part of my world right now. This is this is it. I think um, we, Scott. I think we should share with everybody that you and I did a dry run at two o'clock, just to ch check out the technology, check the lighting, check how the slides worked. We practiced a little bit. Yeah, because you just you just never know what's you know. I I, I don't want to practice when I'm getting on you know, a meeting. By the way, here's a perfect example. I stopped sharing my screen. So I had you guys on the right side of my screen when I was speaking. I stopped sharing my screen and I'm still looking at all of you guys now, but now look, where does it look like I'm looking? It looks like I'm looking off the screen. So what do I do? I move my camera to where everybody is. <laughs> so, now I'm still looking at everybody. Yeah, the right? operative thought is you don't get a second chance to make a good first impression. You gotta, yeah, you gotta be looking. So I'm gonna stop there and see if anybody has any questions. Oh, the, 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 the thing too, to just point out, if people are using the chat feature, which I do see that, you know, some people have put, you know, um, information uh, into chat, which I think is terrific. Um, uh, next to the, on the bottom line where chat is, there's, there's a file thing. You can click, you, you, there, and then there's three lines uh, uh, next to it. Uh, is, no, no wait, wait, under the file. No, I don't uh, think that works right now. Oh, uh, well, maybe, maybe, no. Matt has, maybe Matt does not have that currently enabled. Oh, you, can't even, you can't even copy the content of the uh, chat box. Normally, there's a three dots, and you can save the chat. Right. You can't do that in this call here. I don't know why. I can not even I cannot even do copy and paste. Yeah, it's how, it's it's however the it's however the the host has it uh, has it set up. So a lot of meetings. So, um, uh, you, let's Scott. Let's circle back to something Peggy's taught the two of us is uh, 
uh, Peggy has all of her devices out when she's on a call. So if you don't have two monitors, but you have an iPad, you can use your iPad during a meeting to look people up. It's there, you own it, and it's on your probably on your Wi-Fi. Uh, so you can get around the two monitor problem that way. And you know, you have your phone, you can look things up. You want to be fully armed. And it's in a way that it wasn't possible in an in-person meeting. I used to go to uh, ACG Intergrowth where there'd be uh, 100 private equity firms and I'd try to hit as many of the candy stores as possible. And at each firm, I really didn't have time to look people up to see whether I knew anybody at the booth or what I had written to them about. Their name might be familiar. Now you're on Zoom, you're sitting in your office and you can do so many more powerful things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just want to add something though. I think that all of that is true and I do use a lot of devices. If you're coming to a meeting and you're listening to a speaker or something because everybody can see you, if you're looking down at your device, you may be doing it for all the right reasons, but now nobody knows whether you're looking down at that device to Google me or check me out on LinkedIn or whether you're checking your email or playing words with friends. So, uh, right. you know, uh, you really, I, I feel like, yes, it's good. I like your idea of taking a screenshot, but to spend time when people are what could be watching you and then you don't look like you're engaged. You look like you're disengaged because they don't know what you're doing. That's just, that's just my thinking. Oh, what good do you point. Know? Good point. Is there any, <laughs> is, it, is it possible to unlock the chat so people can copy it or save it? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Peggy, you want to check that out? Peggy's a co-host today. She'll okay. do a little quick research. We have a few more minutes for questions. Uh, on the uh, chat, copying the chat, I know that Marty Latman knows how to do it. Because no, you know what? If you just go to a um, I just did it. If I if I go to a, something on the chat, I highlight it. I can. It says select all. Doesn't work. Then, but, you, then, but, it, but it won't you know, let. Anyway, it but won't. now it won't let me cut. Now, but now I want to copy. Okay, right. Well, let's, not, let's not waste time on it. We'll. Uh, okay. We'll, we'll do this. Out. We'll have a master class at some point where we 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 can add that. But okay. any questions? I'll check out that. Group, we have a few more minutes. Right. So. Real quick, the uh, I use the snippet tool, and I can I can cut and paste everyone's picture and the entire participant list here. Yep. By snipping it and then putting it over onto a Word document, paste you know, and, and save it there. Yeah, like a, like as an image. So I mean, yeah, yeah. same. same but, you yep. know, if you're if you're taking a picture, which is you know when I use with my ca my camera, don't hold your camera up like this. Right. That you're doing it. <laughs> I'm taking a picture right here, and you don't know. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> so. Scott, okay, I question. have a question. You must be saving a ton of time now that everything is virtual. Isn't that a huge benefit for you, or would you still go back to the good old days if you could? Well, I mean, that's a really good question. So, well, you should tell everybody, Scott, that you're a shadow of your former self. Oh yeah. So one of the things. Um, you know, that, that the, uh, I really was, uh, I would eat breakfast, lunch and dinner, you know, like crap food and like, you know, like, I, I mean, you know, in what I do, like I'd go to La Scala for breakfast, the Capitol Grill for lunch, I'd have dinner events, I'd have, right. So, I mean, I, I used to eat like a pig, um, without a doubt. Uh, you know, I was definitely not starving. I'd come home, my wife would say, are you hungry? And, eh, you know, <laughs> so, so I ate, a lot, ate out a lot. Um, in December, my wife finally said to me, "Like enough is enough. Maybe you should start working out." About ten years, about eight years ago, I I hurt my shoulder and I stopped. I used to play a lot of competitive tennis. I had to stop. So literally, I I, I was in lousy shape. So starting in October, I started with a personal trainer, and COVID hit. You know, and um and I actually started. I continued um, doing it, and now I do three mornings a week. I've got a, a personal trainer, which I do on Zoom because, again, as I pointed out, I don't see anybody. Oh. Um, I work out on the other days. Um, I, I've actually lost 40 pounds and five, I actually bought new pants the other day, literally five inches less than I started with um, yeah, um, at the beginning of all of this. 
And um, so, so, so I do miss the interaction with people, right? So, I mean, that's the, 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 the thing that's really thrown me for the loop is the, you know, the interaction with people. Um, the, uh, because I, I, you know, I'm, I'm a, as you may notice, I'm a people person. Uh, I really I, like spending time. I noticed. Um, so, but with respect to, am I going to um, continue to use, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be doing this for another year. I mean, you know, I mean, the chances of me meeting in person with people until there's enough people with the vaccine, enough people yep. know that it works. And I mean, I'm not, I'm, 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 you know, I'm not getting sick either. Yeah, I'm, I'm like last man out. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be a pioneer on this thing. Um, but I am going to use this technology, though, on a going forward basis, wherever I have the ability to do it, um, simply because it is a very efficient way. I mean, exactly. I used to put so many miles on my car. I have never owned a car. I bought a new car just before all of this started in October. I bought a, it, it actually, it, it's really pretty, it's a Porsche. Um, and I was all excited to have this car and to drive it around and everything like that. And then it, it, I put snow tires on it. You know, uh, I, had the, I got the four wheel drive one. And um, I, I mean, I kept the snows on the car in the summer. I never drove the car. I've literally, since COVID started, I, I, I've put one tank of gas in my car. Um, I had, a, the, the, the car needed to be serviced because time went by. I've never owned a car that needed servicing <laughs> because time went by and because I didn't, you know, over, you know, put too many miles on the damn thing. Right. So, but yes, I do plan on, you know, I know it's a long answer to a silly, an interesting question, yeah. but this is going to be an integral part of what I continue to do on a going forward basis because it really is very effective. Right. Now, the winter is going to be pretty darn hard for everybody. I mean, right? People can't be outside the kind of the way. So when people start talking about having Zoom fatigue, forget about having Zoom fatigue because this is the world. <laughs> and um, so if you're not going to be doing this, you're really going to be isolated. We uh, really don't know when it's, when it's going to be possible to have in-person meetings. Consider the fact that uh, most of the theaters are now not really planning to open, maybe June, probably not till September. Yeah. They have a lot of money at stake. I mean, so, who in the world is going to sit next to somebody in a, in a closed in place like, uh, you know, on Broadway when, when, it was, when it was tight before all of this started? Yeah. Um, I mean, the last thing I'm going to let is somebody that I don't know lean in. I, I don't even, I don't even hang out. I mean, with, with my kids, I, I mean, that, you know, that I send them bef when, when, uh, when I see them, like even for, um, you know, everybody keeps getting COVID tests. I mean, it's like, you're not coming and playing with coming over to my house if you haven't been tested. I mean, like, sorry, you know, it's the way it goes. Our simple family goal is to not get sick over the winter and to be alive next June. That's yeah. it. And then we'll see what happens next. But uh, you can be, be successful. The key about it is you can absolutely be successful in this world. Yeah, uh, well, it's, it's a great tool. And uh, before we close, I just wanted to share with everybody that uh, all of my candidates in my search practice have been doing Zoom interviews. Uh, the phone interview is basically dead. And uh, I have heard stories from our members of people who have gotten interviewed by individuals and committees, onboarded and started work without ever actually meeting anybody in person. We are in a new uh, time frame, and uh, you need to get with the program as they said in the army. But you know, I, I just want to add, uh, are, you are- five o'clock and people are starting to drop off the call. Okay, but I, I just want you, you are upfront, close and personal with people on Zoom. In you some are. ways you are even more close and you can generate feelings on Zoom than if you're sitting across a conference table with them. Uh, because I can see everything about you. And especially if you're on a one-on-one -on -one call, if you're having an interview, you could be really up close. And so you can develop those warm relationships and, and trust. And there's, no, and there's no background noise. I had a uh, an hour and a half meeting with one of our members where I was helping him with his search. You couldn't do that at a restaurant. And on the call, I was able to share my screen for certain things. I was able to forward things to him. 
Uh, it is a very powerful tool and you need to harness it uh, for your own benefit. So Scott, I, I, it's five after five. I, I, I'm, as you know, a fan of meetings start on time and should end on time. So we're just gonna uh, thank you uh, for participating in chat with Matt. Uh, I'm gonna pull another rabbit out of the hat soon, I hope, and to have a, another uh, interesting, I don't know if they'll be as interesting as Scott, but hopefully they will. Uh, Scott, you were, you were terrific. And uh, I just wanna thank you so much for being on chat with Matt. Thank you, bye. Bye bye. It would be helpful you. to anybody. Feel free to reach out. Okay. Thank you. Scott will probably send you something.